Okay, so uh, first I would like, of course, I mean, to thank, I mean, Dr. Omar Asmour and also Dr. Amr Harobi uh, and the Department for Architecture at King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals for inviting me to this um, webinar and to speak about the interplay between physical and digital mediums for communicating heritage information. So the title of today's lecture is Digital Heritage, the Co Communicating Built Heritage Information through the integration of digital technology into physical reality. So let me first uh, introduce uh, myself. I mean, of course, I mean, uh, thank you, Dr. Omar, for introducing me. But um, here, this is like a summary of uh, my uh, career in the field of heritage. So I studied my bachelor in architectural engineering at Asiat University in Egypt. And then I studied a master degree in architectural restoration in uh, Italy. University called the Enna, and after that I had the opportunity to study my master as an Erasmus program uh, focusing on management of cultural heritage uh, or cultural landscapes, and that was a um, joint program between three different uh, universities in three different countries in Europe, between France, Italy, and Germany. And in 2015, I started my PhD study at the University of Kailouf in Belgium, and that was focusing on digital heritage. After that, I also was working as a postdoc uh, in digital heritage at Maastricht University in the Netherlands before I returned back to Egypt, uh, where I'm working now as an assistant professor at Asiut University. And today's lecture is based on uh, my PhD study, and that was at K. Leuven in Belgium. So in order to situate this research, uh, it's an intersection of multiple disciplines mainly heritage and human-computer interaction. It starts from the field of built heritage as a context, focusing on the tacit knowledge of built heritage and learning from the field of digital heritage uh, to communicate this knowledge to general museum visitors. And the communication approach I'm following, it's tangible interaction, which is a subfield of uh, HCI or human computer interaction, uh, in which interaction design is implemented following different uh, evaluation methods. And that's the interdisciplinarity of the uh, topic of my PhD, which I'm presenting today, which is the, the digital heritage. So the context of this study is built heritage, which expresses the richness and diversity of our common past. We believe that our monuments are not just physical objects, but they also communicate meanings and values over time. And these meanings and values tend to vary from explicit information, which is relatively easy to represent or communicate, to more tacit qualities and values, which is more challenging to communicate. Examples of tacit knowledge of our heritage, such as architectural qualities, um, cultural values, artistic features, symbolic significance. And here we have the iceberg metaphor when I present or uh, represent the explicit knowledge, which is only on the top of the knowledge and easy to represent, and the tacit knowledge, which is in depth knowledge and it's uh, relatively um, more challenging to communicate. And we are motivated by the emerging concept of heritage democratization. So the significance of heritage can be appreciated by a broader public, such as to raise community awareness or to enable visitors to appreciate heritage in experiential ways. And the question now is how this tacit knowledge is being conveyed to visitors in conventional ways. They use um, labels beside objects or orally communicated by a tour guide or possibly by an audio tour guide. But this information is complex and multidimensional. So digital technologies have also enabled various opportunities for communicating information via a variety of paradigms, such as virtual reality, for visualizing the virtual reconstruction of ancient worlds, or augmented reality for immersing users in historical uh, stories. But we still seek a communication process that can be more engaging, more informative, more collaborative and potentially enjoyable. And this can be tangible interaction, which emphasizes the tangibility and materiality of the interface, 
and why tangible interaction? Because it's a promising paradigm and the touch experience causes better remembering of the information. It's also collaborative, affordable, and easy to learn. And we believe that all of these advantages are relevant for communicating heritage uh, information. So we have here the physical and digital. Each has different key qualities. The physical, which is the most common in communication, we have advantages such as affordance, the physical affordance, and how the physical form demonstrates the possibility of an action, how the information can be visualized in a physical way, and that's the physicalization. Situatedness, meaning how the information relies on the physical context to be understood. But we have also other qualities, other qualities for the digital medium. Uh, digital technology allows for an immediate access for different layers of information, and it can be automatically personalized. It also allows for an immersive experience, so physical and digital. And here in this study, we propose the integration of digital technology into the physical reality. And here we came up with the term digital. And we believe that digital heritage, it's a potential medium for more enriched and playful communication of the meanings and values of heritage. So we uh, proposed a model of digital heritage where we have the horizontal axis represents the level of physical affordance, such as how the features of an interface physically support or facilitate taking an action. And the vertical axis conveys the level of situatedness or how the technology depends on the physical context to communicate information. So for example, we have here websites. Most websites are non-situated in nature, allowing users to appreciate digital information of heritage regardless of the location. But for example, here we have projection mapping, which is more situated as a graphical depiction of the information can be directly and physically related to the artifacts, which are the projection uh, occurs. Shape changing interface, and when the artifacts become the output medium, um, at the interface becomes embodied by the physical shape. And there are many communication technologies which are located in the model. And the model considers that almost every communication technology is digital in some way or form, but some are more digital than others. And accordingly, the model proposes three distinct categories of digital heritage. The first one is augmented, and that requires uh, some form of continuous interaction between physical heritage objects and digital electronic devices. The second one is integrated, requires users to interact with heritage objects using tangible user interfaces, which are capable of communicating information through the use of haptic rendering methods. And the third one is actuated, uh, includes immersive and screenless forms of interaction and the material characteristics of heritage objects might convey meanings by appreciating physical manifestations of these objects. And this model has been published in a conference paper in 2017. So the main research question here is how can digital heritage, which is the integration of digital technology into physical reality, facilitate the communication of built heritage information to museum visitors. Where we have heritage here, or built heritage as a context, and communicating the information to the visitors is the expected outcome, and we use here digital heritage as an approach to achieve that outcome. So what we have done that we investigated some digital approaches to communicate heritage information through full experimental studies mainly from the collaboration uh, with the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels. For each study, we focused on one specific knowledge or one specific uh, tacit knowledge that we would like to communicate. So for example, in the first study here, we focused on uh, the symbolic significance. And the second one about the architectural context, third one about the spatial temporal transformation, and last one about the informal cultural learning. So in the first study, we investigated the role of tangible interaction to communicate tacit knowledge of built heritage. And we choose zoosurveillance complex 
which is believed to be the oldest large scale stone structure in the world. And the museum, the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels, uh, uh, the, the museum that I was collaborating with in Belgium, uh, has the largest collection of Egyptian antiquities in Belgium, including a monumental scale model, a uh, maquette of Doser Pyramid Complex in Saqqara uh, that dates back to uh, 1943 and fabricated by the famous French archaeologist Jean Flebleur. And this maquette is not publicly accessible, it's kept now in the storage rooms of the museum. So we decided to choose a specific story to communicate to the visitors of the museum. And the story was related to the entrance colonnades. So it has, um, it has been suggested that the architecture of the colonnades represented the map of ancient Egypt. So that means each niche, which is a space uh, created between two adjacent columns, I'm not sure if you see my cursor, um, represent one of the norms, which is a territorial division of ancient Egypt. They are equal in number, 42, and the architectural layout of the colonnade might have been designed to portray the Nile River, and the in chamber could represent the delta. And also the processing of the faro along the corridor and passing by each niche may evoke a ritualized version of the faro's journey along the Nile. So we uh, designed, experimented, and uh, evaluated three different conditions. Each condition has a passive um, representation, which is a map of ancient Egypt, act, sorry, uh, an interactive navigation and input, which is a map of ancient, ancient Egypt and passive representation, which is a, a building itself. So here in the first condition, when you move your finger along the map of ancient Egypt, along the Nile, then you have a corresponding walkthrough of the building on the larger screen. While in the second condition, we changed the touch screen into a physical installation of the map of ancient Egypt with a 3D printed statue of the pharaoh. And when you move the pharaoh physically along the Nile, then you have a corresponding walkthrough on the building. And that's clear from that uh, large screen. And the third condition, we decided to have both the input and output as physical or tangible uh, material. So we have the physical installation map of ancient Egypt with a 3D printed statue of the pharaoh. And also we have the building as a 3D maquette with LED integrated in each of the niche. And when you move the pharaoh along the Nile, then you have the LED lights up on the corresponding niche. And also in the uh, last condition, visitors, they were allowed to touch it they can feel it, they can have an eye level view to see the different details that we 3D printed, such as the columns and also the small figurines to give you a, a sense of scale. And we started this study with a low fidelity test session at our research lab. Uh, and this test was followed by a pilot study in the Rail Museum environment before we carry out the large scale study. And the evaluation study deployed mixed method methodology consisting of observations. So the resulting observation data was chronologically mapped for each participant and then labeled in terms of user behavior, such as whether participant focused on the navigation or the representation component or both simultaneously, or whether they started to discuss with each other. And then we mapped this behavior to their learning through a semi-structured interview. All participants were invited to participate in a semi-structured interview that focused on whether and how they understood the tacit knowledge of the colonnade, such as the symbolic relationship between the map and the building. Uh, we also uh, asked participants to estimate the dimensions of the colonnade by sketching a cross section on a grid paper. So we give, him, we give them a, a, a grid paper and we asked them to estimate the height and width of the colonnade. And here we see some details that participants remember, such as the difference of height and some details of the columns. And participants were asked to fill in a standard user experience questionnaire. And here we see that the last condition, 
which is a tangible and physical condition, has a more positive performance in most of the skills, such as attractiveness, efficiency, and the dependability. A we, uh, Uh, this study has been published as a journal article at um, MDPI Heritage in 2018. And we concluded this study with some discussion points, such as when combining tangible interaction navigation and representation modalities, an equilibrium needs to be sought between the affordances and the required cognitive efforts. Also, the level of realism, physical construction, and manipulation features of 3D scale model influences how people observe and remember architectural features. Grasping tangible models proved also to effectively communicate correct scale and more detailed information, such as the shape of columns and proportions of the building. And the second study that we carry, um, we carried out this study uh, in order to investigate how augmented reality enhances the communication of the architectural context of an isolated relief from the Nimrud Palace in Iraq, which was exhibited totally out of context at the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels. Also, as an exceptional motivation that the original palace has been recently destroyed by ISIS. So we digitally reconstructed the room of the palace where the relief uh, was located and that was done in an abstract visualization due to the uncertainty of the information. And we emphasized some architectural features. After that, we developed an augmented reality uh, application. And here, this short video uh, shows the, the experiment. So we uh, give the participants an iPad or tablet, and then we ask them to point it to the object. And when they rotate, they can see a 360 view of the room with all the architectural features that have done in an abstract visualization. They can see the room of the Nimrud Palace in Iraq while being in the museum in Belgium. And we also deployed mixed methods to evaluate this experience. And the first method was a pre-task interview. So we invited visitors first to conventionally visit the artifact by looking at the relief. Um, and probably reading the labels beside it. And then we asked them some questions to evaluate what they learned and whether they were able to contextualize the artifacts. After that, we give them the iPad and then they have the AR, the augmented reality uh, experience. And we have uh, one evaluation method, it was uh, the observation. So we investigated the angle of view in their augmented reality experience for each participant as an intuitive interaction and also after telling them that they can look around. Uh, participants were also invited to a semi-structured interview that focused on understanding the architectural surroundings of the original uh, context. And they were also requested to describe the appearance of the room by sketching two papers, one in 2D for the close surroundings of the object, and another one in 3D with the entire room where the object was located. And here we have very interesting results from these sketching in terms of remembering the different architectural features. Uh, and after the interview, we gave them a, a concise user experience questionnaire that allowed uh, participants to express their impression that emerged when they uh, interacted with the AR application, such as how the application was good, inventive, motivated, attractive, and so on. And this study has been published as a journal article at uh, Studies in Digital Heritage in 2018. But we concluded this study also with discussion points, such as how the use of augmented reality in museum environments positively um, affects the memorability of visitors, in particular the architectural features and uh, spatial dimensions, and also the use of AR in museums stimulates the curiosity of visitors. And the third study in this PhD that we moved out from the museum environment to a built heritage environment. So we investigated the deployment of an interactive projection mapping installation in situ, which can be steered by a tangible user interface to communicate the spatiotemporal transformation of built heritage. 
So we have here the case study. It's uh, a medieval chapel in the eastern part of Belgium. Um, and the interesting thing about this chapel is that it has several building phases uh, during about 900 years. So we choose only three building phases, the most important three building phases to communicate to visitors. And we built the models of the phases, both digitally using 3D uh, modeling software and physically by 3D printing them. And we designed an interface that users can steer the digital model by placing the corresponding physical model on the uh, design platform. Uh, so visitors can choose one of the building phases, for example, the building phase of the 13th century. And by controlling the projector by the two hands, they can uh, see how this phase looked like in the past, seeing the projected visualization on the walls and the ceiling of the chapel. So this short video here, we have the projector and you choose one of the building phases and you put it here on the platform. You control the projector and you see how the chapel looked like in the 13th century. For example, these two windows don't exist anymore. And you see how the ceiling was different. It was a uh, wooden truss, it's not flattened uh, anymore. And we also uh, followed several evaluation methods. The first one, it was uh, ob uh, observation. So this chronological analysis shows when and for how long participants spend time interacting with uh, each of the building phases. Uh, and then we have the semi structure interview and the questions focused on revealing the comprehension of the uh, spatial transformation of the chapel over time by asking them to describe the differences uh, between the building phases in terms of space, dimensions, colors, and, and lighting as well. Uh, participants were handed a simplified cross-section of the current building phase, and we asked them to sketch a cross-section of the 13th century building phase based on what they remember from the projection and also the physical model. And here we see how uh, their sketches were very close to the actual uh, cross-section. And participants were also asked to fill in a standard user experience uh, questionnaire, and the results demonstrate the general tendencies in how the installation performed. Uh, we also concluded this study with different uh, uh, discussion points, and this study has been published as a journal article in Digital Applications in Archaeology and Cultural Heritage, and that's in 2018. And uh, the discussion points that we have, such as how the interplay between the two modalities of projection and tangible interface strengthen each other and enhances the communication of both uh, aesthetic features and the special dimensions. And the fourth and last study that we combine the digital experience with gamification approach in order to support cultural learning for young museum visitors. So here we have the case study. It's an original ancient Egyptian tomb chapel in a scale one-to-one -one at the Royal Museum of Art and History in Brussels. And um, the interesting part about this chapel, the tomb chapel, that it's valorized in learning plans for school visits as a history of Egypt is part uh, of their educational curriculum. So, and that's here, the internal wall of the tomb chapel. And we organized a co-design workshop with heritage professionals to define the types of tacit knowledge that they would like to communicate to the children. Here is the drawings on the wall. And after uh, the co-design workshop, we came up with three types of knowledge or that we would like to communicate to the children. The first one, architectural qualities about the role of the false door. Second one, it's historical values, the different types of offerings. And the third one about artistic features, uh, and that's the role of colors to distinguish the gender. For example, when the, uh, any figure was painted in dark, that means a man, and if it's painted in light, that means a woman. And our methodology supports different sides of collaboration and gamification. So we designed three different uh, game setups to communicate three different types of information, architectural, historical, and artistic. And this is the chosen part of the internal wall. And then we built a replica of the wall in a scale one-to-one -to, -one to be located outside the tomb. 
Um, and that replica consists of three games with a shared progress score. And when participants complete each game, more information is revealed to them. So here, when we finish the replica, we put, here, we put it here outside the Tomb Chapel, and it consists of three games. The first game that we ask students or children to solve a 3D puzzle together in group, and when they solve the puzzle, they have to figure out where to put it on the replica wall. So they go uh, in the uh, chapel uh, from inside and then they put it using strong magnets. And when they put it correctly, then they have the 12 LED in the progress bar light up and then more information about the false door is revealed to them. And the second one, we give them magnetic cords and we ask them to sort it according to the types of offering. And for each correct card, they have one LED lights up. And when they complete that game, more information is revealed about historical offerings. And the third one, we give them also different magnetic cords, and we ask them to figure out uh, the gender. So they go inside and check whether this figure was painted in dark or in light, and then they put it correctly here on the replica wall, and when they finish it, they have more information about the paintings. And we designed it also uh, in a multi-language interface, so we can easily change it from French to English uh, or Dutch. Uh, and we also have um, the child-friendly user experience questionnaire using Lego blocks. So the children, they can evaluate this, uh, their experience, whether it's like, I mean, um, uh, creative or not, informative or not, and so on. And we also have um, the evaluation methodology includes uh, the observation, and here our results on cultural learning are adapted from Culp's model of experiential learning which has been increasingly popular in museum interpretation and education programs. So the three game setups distributed the learning cycle in terms of how they occurred in space, uh, whether the learning stage were distributed between the table and the Tomb Chapel, uh, passing by the replica wall or clustered in the second game. And also, not only the space, but also how these learning cycles occurred in, in terms of time, such as whether the learning stages were sequential in the first game, uh, or overlapped in the second game, and intermittent in the third game, meaning that learning stages were not always continuous. And both the students and teachers were invited to participate in a concise structured interview that was audio recorded and was focused on uh, what they learned and their appreciation uh, of the game. The interviews were followed by a novel and playful user experience questionnaire that measured in a collaborative and engaging uh, uh, way how the experience of the uh, students was enjoyable, easy, clear, attractive, uh, creative, and informative. It was designed as a tangible extension uh, of the game uh, by using Lego blocks, and the three used colors of the blocks correspond to each of the games. Uh, that means the yellow, red, and blue. And also uh, the language, which was easily changed from Dutch to French according to the language that children speak. And this study has been published as a journal article in ACM Journal of Computing and Cultural Heritage in 2020. We concluded this study with several discussion points, such as we recommend situating heritage artifacts in the early phases of visitors' interaction to allow for interwoven learning stages during uh, their visit. And here, uh, I uh, briefly present other digital heritage examples that we also conducted during my PhD study, but was not published. The first one, it was a museum camp in Amsterdam. So that means we camped for three nights in a museum in Amsterdam, and we were uh, requested to find a solution how to present this piece exhibited here in this uh, uh, display. So I designed a gamified tangible user interface to interact with this museum object. So uh, when you solve uh, the, the interface using the three pieces of puzzle, then you activate a very uh, small projector and it gives you more information about this and also uh, um, to translate the, the Greek text into English. And when you rotate it, then you see the object from the other side. Uh, the second one that was, um, uh, the second one, it was uh, a summer school at the University of Oulu in Finland. 
And we have here, we had an imaginary context of a museum environment in which we used Microsoft HoloLens to contextualize two physical museum objects. Uh, so that was a collaboration with three other PhD students at ATH in, in Zurich. And we had this imaginary context and yeah, let me just Yeah, using uh, the HoloLens, then you can see uh, 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 you can see the virtual model inside the physical model, and when you come closer, then you cut through uh, the building and you see the hidden tunnels. And also, we added some ambient sounds. So, for example, when you come closer to the river, you have you you, uh, you hear uh, the sound of the water, and when you come closer to uh, the desert, you hear the sound of the wind, and so on. Uh, this is also another example that it was uh, at the Museum of Fine Arts in Mons in Belgium. Um, we used the projector and the Kinect camera to invite passerby to visit the museum in, in, a, in a fun and engaging way. So um, we use the project, we use the projector here, and when you see the skeleton, you try to take to have the same pose of this skeleton. And when you have it correctly, then we show you uh, one of the artworks at the museum, and then we ask you to visit the museum and you see different artworks and different poses. So uh, now we discuss, uh, I think we still have like, I mean, five, 10 minutes, yeah, to discuss the, the main contribution of the thesis. And the first one is an Im amended version of digital heritage model in which we made conceptual changes such as dividing AR into special AR and see through AR, and we added also tangible gamification and uh, smart replicas. And the second contribution here is the design workflow of our digital prototypes that uh, typically followed four phases. The first one, the context, which was a result of direct collaboration with the museum, as museum creators propose a context of, for, uh, of masterpieces from the museum collection that have significant societal, historical, and educational values. And the second phase, which was about the content. So heritage professionals were also actively involved in deciding on the content to communicate. And uh, as an um, in-progress matrix, we map here the different types of heritage information, which is the uh, content, to the suitable digital approaches. And the third phase, it was a prototyping. So each of the prototypes was part of an iterative design process. After an initial, uh, an initial sketching phase, a primary installation was prototyped and tested in the lab, and then a working installation was tested uh, in the museum. After that, the final digital prototype was developed. And the last one is uh, in the wild deployment. So uh, each prototype was uh, evaluated in real world heritage environments, such as a museum or uh, a monument. The third contribution of the thesis is that we presented four digital prototypes with different challenges fabricated in different materials and scales to communicate different forms of built heritage information in several contexts. Uh, and here, this is a comparison among the four digital prototypes in terms of the built heritage information to communicate. So for example, here in the first one, we have the symbolic significance. In the second one, the architectural contextualization, Third one, it's about the social temporal transformation. And then the last study, we had the informal learning. And also in terms of uh, technologies. So here we see that we use different technologies among the uh, four studies. And the fourth contribution is that we present design guidelines. So we outlined several design guidelines that support heritage communication through digital mediums to public visitors, such as, um, the design of a digital experience should be driven by the heritage content. So we recommend that designing a digital experience should not be initiated by the technology, and that's the common mistake by the museums nowadays. Uh, and instead, heritage content has to be the foundation of deciding uh, on the digital approach. And the last contribution that we present an evaluation framework of digital heritage indicating when and how to use the different methods based on the design objectives. For example, for the objectives of learning, here are the appropriate methods uh, and so on for the other objectives. Um, and in the framework, we also present 
novel evaluation methods, such as uh, sketching, to report on the learning and memorability of architectural features and playful user experience questionnaire to collect data from children in loaded environments. And here we present four directions of future work. The first direction is designing for an inclusive museum. So digital heritage promises several opportunities to address other specific visitorships based on their age, such as children, uh, or vision, such as blind and visually impaired people, mobility or sociocultural aspects. And the second direction is designing for the Arab context. Future studies should investigate the influence of the contextual factors of digital heritage in other regions, such as the Arab world, such as user uh, characteristics, socio-cultural factors, and built uh, environment features. And the future of digital heritage in the Arab region might include raising community awareness about heritage assets and also empowering citizens to appreciate their own heritage in more experiential ways. Third direction of future work is designing with instead for visitors. Involving visitors in designing their digital prototypes would uh, correspond to the ambitions of digital fabrication movements by enabling uh, citizens' empowerment. And the last direction is uh, designing for an activated digital. And we believe that the emerging field of shape-changing technology forms a prime example in the scope of digital, which is capable of physically adapting the shape of objects based on users' input. And here, uh, this is uh, the last thing, that my thesis has received a high praise for its uh, novelty and interdisciplinarity by the um, digital heritage community and also by the community of uh, museum studies. So I have been invited to present the approach of digital heritage in multiple venues in conferences, such as the Conference on Cultural Heritage and New Technologies in Vienna, um, the International Engineering Conference in Riyadh, Museums in Arabia in Bahrain. And also in museums, such as the British Museum in London, Art and History Museum in Brussels, Aller Person Museum in Amsterdam, Spol Wish Museum in Utrecht, uh, Bibliotheca Alexandrina, and uh, uh, National Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Egypt. And lastly, in universities as well, in Maastricht University, at K. Leuven, in University of Liege, and finally here at King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals. In addition, my thesis has been redrafted by the IGNITE EU funded project as an online course on Daria Teach platform that aims to uh, develop open source and high quality teaching material for the digital arts and humanities. So um, I uh, presented the main ideas and examples of digital heritage in one module of the online course Storytelling for Digital Narratives and Blended Spaces which is now available and accessible to everyone uh, via the Daria Teach platform. And here, this is my last slide. It's about the future of digital heritage in the kingdom uh, of Saudi Arabia. So according to the 2030 vision of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, it's very clear that the tourism and heritage form one of the cores of the sustainable development of the kingdom. Um, as an evidence on that, that our, the investment uh, we see on heritage sector and museums, and we uh, all have seen, even virtually, the pavilion of Saudi Arabia at Expo 2020 in Dubai, and how high-tech exhibition techniques have been uh, used and developed. However, I believe that due to the rich content of heritage in our Arab world, and particularly in the kingdom, we still face a challenge of how such content can be exhibited to the young generation in a way that they benefit from it and also they enjoy it. And here I see the added value of the approach of digital heritage. Yeah, and thank you so much for uh, your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Islam, for this uh, informative and, mashallah, uh, amazing uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, we enjoyed it and uh, we wish that uh, our participants did so. Uh, okay, any uh, question? Uh, we have okay, 15 participants. Uh, 
uh, including uh, Dr. Amir, our chairman, Dr. Omar Mahdi, CRB chairman, and everyone here is so, yani, mashallah, distinguished guest to us. Questions, yeah, Jama'a? Uh, okay, nothing in the chat. Okay, we have one hand raised. Father Dr. Amr. Um, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, alaikum, so, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Islam, for this uh, any, uh, intensive any look at uh, the digital architecture. Um, and, uh, you know, digital heritage, and you're, yani, mashallah, you're in. Um, expertise in the matter is uh, is highly appreciated nowadays because uh, this is um, well it's not probably this is will will be the future of uh, uh, of architecture and uh, you know design uh, inshallah um, my question would be how versatile is uh, any um, these techniques uh, that you are talking about in terms of architectural design, education, you know, and design education in general, not just only architectural education. Uh, I mean, how can how can we use these uh, and implement them in um, many sectors, not only in heritage uh, or in like uh, let's say museum applications? Because once you bring an example. Um, and this is this happens uh, yani all the time, and you know, people uh, get stuck with that example. They will say, "Oh, this is only for museums, uh, or this is only for this or that." So, um, if you can talk uh, a little bit about how uh, versatile these techniques are, how implementing AR, VR, and mixed realities, immersive realities uh, in uh, in design education and architecture education. Uh, yani, uh, would be would shape the future of uh, uh, of this. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much. I mean, uh, Dr. Amer, for your uh, comments and your questions, well, and um, I think now, I mean, we all follow what what's happening now in the world in terms of uh, the interplay between physical and dig and digital, and uh, recently uh, the launch of the metaverse and how virtual and digital will be um, in each aspect of our lives. Uh, but the importance here is that we should not ignore the physical reality that we live in. And that's why I'm focusing on the term digital. So of course, I mean, we're not uh, uh, against the digital technology. We are with digital technology, but also we would like to combine the digital technologies in a way that uh, we um, exploit the advantages of being physically in the space. So the physical reality. Um, and that's why we can use, of course, I mean, uh, techniques such as augmented reality, but instead of using augmented reality as a real uh, uh, application on a smartphone, that we uh, should uh, exploit being in a museum. And an example, for example, that I, um, uh, presented today is the use of AR in a museum. Um, we all have seen different AR applications in museums, but why this one is different? Because we would like, I mean, to exploit being physically in a museum, having this original piece, and you see the physical model, but also you see different layers of information uh, using the digital uh, um, digital layers, such as, for example, how uh, the palace looked like in Iraq and how we can contextualize this piece in the palace. So uh, in terms of architectural teaching, uh, I would like, I mean, to let you know that, I mean, last year I was teaching a course at Maastricht University in the Netherlands that was not for architecture students, but I, it was for uh, heritage students and they followed participatory design workshops. And this, in this participatory design workshops, I asked each group of students to physicalize their idea. So each group, they come up with an idea, and then I ask them, instead of uh, visualize your idea um, verbally, or uh, uh, visualize your idea like by drawings or, or so on, I ask them to physicalize. So I give them different materials, and I ask them to present their ideas in a physical way. And when they finish it, uh, they were very, uh, 
uh, happy about the outcome. And I have very uh, positive response from the students uh, for different reasons. The first reason that they say, okay, when we have it physical, uh, we feel a sense of ownership that we own this idea and we have a tangible outcome out of this idea that we can uh, touch it, we can uh, uh, show it to other people. Uh, this is one aspect. The second aspect also that some of students, I mean, because of the language problems, I mean, they are not able to express themselves verbally or visually, but when we ask them to physicalize uh, their ideas, like, I mean, to how to present it in a physical way, they are able to do it. They are able even to build on the ideas of their colleagues and to have a collective idea out of this physical uh, um, mock-ups. Uh, in, in the future of architectural education, I truly believe that digital technologies, I mean, will be involved in some way or form. But how they will be involved, this is like, I mean, our responsibility. So we should involve the digital technology in a way that we combine the traditional methods and we combine the physical reality with the digital uh, capabilities uh, 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 just, I mean, to enrich uh, the, the teaching in general. Uh, thank you, Dr. Islam. Of course, digital is much better than digital alone. Otherwise, we all will be converted into robots. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, okay, we have uh, our colleague, uh, Mr. Yeah. Riyad, yeah. from the US. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. So uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank you for your presentation and uh, to thank the department uh, I mean, like for this uh, I mean, like amazing uh, I mean, like webinar. Um, so uh, I mean, nowadays, I mean, I'm doing a very close research I mean, to what you are doing. Uh, so uh, I have so many questions. Um, I will uh, I mean, like, like try to make it I mean, like, uh, I mean, like short. So um, in your... Uh, in your, uh, I mean, like research or like or, or, uh, uh, or like works, uh, you focused on uh, on uh, using, I mean, the VR in one time and then the AR, and I mean, in I mean, in uh, in other time. Uh, what about I mean the mixed reality, uh, and uh, I mean like to combine I mean the I mean I mean the AR and the VR I mean in one session I mean. Let's say I mean in one uh, in one uh, in one experience, and uh, I'm talking about this because uh, I mean like um, um, in our region, uh, I mean in the Arab region in general, and uh, maybe in the Gulf, uh, we have so many I mean uh, like lost heritage, uh, uh, lost or damaged or uh, kind of ignored I mean heritage. And uh, I mean, like nowadays, I mean, with the whole, uh, I mean, like with the change, for example, uh, within Saudi Arabia, uh, now they are focusing more, I mean, like in utilizing, I mean, like uh, every heritage or like every site uh, that we have. So how we can use the mixed reality or uh, VR or, uh, or uh, like an AR uh, and reutilizing, I mean, or like rebuilding, I mean, that lost heritage. Uh, so for example, uh, imagine uh, you are visiting a um, historical site uh, within Saudi Arabia uh, that uh, it's almost, I mean, like lost. Uh, we have a few remaining, I mean, like parts of that building, for example, and then we need to rebuild, I mean, the whole uh, site uh to match uh i mean like uh, whatever uh i mean uh, i mean like image uh, that we have about that history uh, based on the uh, i mean like based on the sources of course um and then uh, to utilize i mean that uh to enhance or like to enrich i mean the tourist i mean uh, experience uh within that site so um uh, i don't know what's i mean like your opinion about this and uh, at the end, 
uh, yes, I mean the, the I mean the VR, AR, or mixed reality, or other kind of technologies. Uh, I mean, like have potentials, but uh, what are the drawbacks uh, of these technologies? Uh, especially if we start to uh, digitalize, I mean, like everything that we have, and uh, maybe we will lose, I mean, the interest, uh, I mean, to lose uh, or uh, to lose, I mean, the interest uh, to uh, to visit, I mean, the actual site. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you so much for your uh, questions. I feel it's kind of a PhD defense and, um, and uh, you're opening up a very, very wide discussion that, uh, I mean, definitely we cannot, I mean, cover all of these aspects in uh, the remaining eight minutes, but let me just, I mean, recap it in, in, in a bit. So you asked about the VR. I'm, I'm not using VR in my study. I'm using maybe instead of AR because AR that we can combine physical and digital. And we asked also, you asked also about mixed reality. I mean, mixed reality is very close to the concept or the approach I'm, I'm following, which is a digital uh, uh, heritage. But maybe the difference between mixed reality and the approach of digital that it's uh, the vertical axis of the, of the model that I presented at the beginning of the lecture, if you remember it, which is about the situatedness. So the mixed reality, I mean, they have, of course, physical and digital. But I mean, in my model of digital heritage, I have also the situatedness. So that means how the information relies or how the physical uh, uh, environment uh, uh, is uh, situated in the communication uh, process. Uh, the aspect that you mentioned about the lost heritage in our region, uh, of course, this is very important uh, topic in the field of heritage and, and, and tourism in general. And um, so many solutions can be uh, followed in order to uh, communicate the information about the lost heritage to the public. And these solutions, uh, of course, may differ according to the uh, context and the situation of each uh, specific case. Uh, so for example, I mean, if it's accessible, maybe we can use augmented reality and we can contextualize uh, uh, the virtual uh, model with the uh, physical remaining uh, of the site. Uh, and maybe if it's not accessible and if it's presented in a museum, of course, we, uh, we can use a different approach uh, like, for example, using tangible user interface, we can use, I mean, different gamification concepts and so on. And another context could be in a museum, uh, sorry, in, in a school, if we would like actually to teach uh, uh, students about the history and about these specific uh, heritage buildings. So in each context, we, sh we can um, use different solution and different approach. Um, last thing that you uh, asked about maybe, it's about the drawbacks. Uh, of this concept of digital, of course, I mean, we, we have some challenges. I, I would call it challenges instead of uh, drawbacks. For example, if we present uh, or if we develop a digital interface and we put it in a museum or in a heritage site, I mean, uh, that should be robust enough, that should be easy to replace, that should be uh, um, uh, safe from uh, any, uh, like, I mean, uh, theft, uh, um, uh, theft or so on. So it's not like, I mean, a touch screen that you put in a, in a, in a museum. Uh, and instead, it's a digital um, or a physical interface, tangible interface with sometimes so many tokens, such as the last example I presented about the gamification in a museum using the different cards. And I can tell you about the challenges that I faced when we experimented this game at the museum with so many kids uh, uh, coming at the museum. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope that I covered like, I mean, some of the points that you raised. I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, time is not sufficient to cover all of them and to have like, I mean, an open discussion about all of these concepts, but I'm, I'm very welcome. I'm, I'm very happy, of course, sorry, to, to discuss this with you uh, uh, later on. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Islam. I think we are done. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending uh, our event. And see you again, inshallah, in our next event, which will be you know, after the midterm break directly. Uh, Dr. Islam, thank you again. We were happy thank to Thank you so you much. Time. Yeah, it was a great pleasure. Yeah, I mean, I mean um, being with you and presenting my uh, study, I mean, to all of you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you.